So it is now my absolute joy and pleasure to introduce Baroness Udine, who's going to give a few opening remarks to officially launch this, this event this morning. The Right Honourable ba uh, Baroness Udine is an advocate for women's economic, social justice and political equality. In 1998, she took her seat in the House of Lords as the first Bangladeshi and Muslim appointed in recognition for her long-standing contribution to community development. A former advisor to the British Prime Minister on community cohesion and improving women's participation in politics and public life, she has served on the Select Committee of European Affairs and chaired several government task forces. As a mother of a son who lives with autism and learning disability, Baroness Udine is a devoted champion of disability rights and for seven years was a board member of Autism Speak. She is an officer and member of the all-party parliamentary group on the Commonwealth, Africa, International Students, Islamic and Ethical Finance, and chairs the Commission, National Commission of Muslim Women. Baroness Odeen, bless you for taking the time out of your ridiculously busy schedule that makes me go weak at the knees just thinking about it, and over to you. Thank you, thank you, Katie. Um, good morning. Uh, it's such a privilege to take part. Thank you so much, Laura Murphy, for your vision and your dedication to this incredible work. And uh, this morning, I am absolutely uh, delighted to be sharing this session, this platform with Rani Abdullah, Rana Os Osekar, Natasha D'Souza, and Dr. Anita Davis Defoe. Um, welcome um, to this uh, wonderful gathering, and it's such a privilege again. Um, my name is Manzilla uh, Paula Uddin, and um, I've been a member of the House of Lords for the past uh, 20, this is my 23rd years. I'm essentially an activist, um, um, a community activist. I joined the Labour Party when I was 16, and I have remained engaged uh, on the, uh, the streets street level politics, I, I suppose, in that sense, but in essence, really uh, enabling and empowering uh, women uh, to realize their full potential, which is, I think, today is all about this. The fact that we are having to remember to celebrate this one day to as a, an example for what's happening to us, all of us. And but it's very important to showcase what is happening to us and the progress that so many of us here have been part of pushing the changes that we have been able to make. I mean, I take changes very personally and very specifically. Um, when I was 16, I went to a, a march which was happening uh, against uh, the fascist in uh, my area, in, uh, which is called Brick Lane uh, in London. And I saw uh, a really avid, uh, very strong woman called Belle Harris, and she always used to sell these incredible, um, you know, powerful messages by women and, and for women. And then she was an activist and she was a feminist. And I bought something which says, and I, this was at the you know, um, early age of 16 when I very foolishly got married. <laughs> and then I says, if I could find a babysitter, I would change the world. And I have kept that uh, postcard. In fact, I should have got it out to show you. As a, as a mark of the person that I've always wanted to be, which is that it wasn't about if I had the children and I could find the babysitter, but that I wanted to change the world. And, you know, I didn't know at that time that I would end up having five children. I have five grandchildren. I'm very blessed. But the, the innate uh, drive, because I'd just come from Bangladesh at the age of 13, uh, sort of being relieved uh, by my family uh, to be here joining my father after the war of liberation. And this drive to see injustice driven out of our communities, our families was as a really pressing factor. So what 
my work is very simple. I, I, I'm not a chair of this, chair of that, and uh, I'm not a, a, a bo- on, on, on many boards. And it's not very possible for many of us from minority communities to achieve board position in this country. Still, women are uh, at the back foot, but so are minority women. So um, I have spent large amount of my lifetime devoted to trying to make a difference to the one woman that comes across me. I think that's one woman at a time because I feel that that's really important that you, when, you know, for women's well being, which is what Katie and Laura and Roger have been trying to pursue. Uh, is really critical. So in parliament, I focus very, very much on um, details around women's development, women's mental well-being. always remembering that, you know, I have four sons and four grandsons and still married to the same man for my sins. But, you know, so it's really important that we engage, we remain engaged, we remain united across political divides, which, and I do work very much across different political parties. Um, and in House of Lords is such a blessing that we are able to do that. We are able to collaborate. So um, I just want to really finish uh, because uh, um, there are so many uh, incredible women taking part. I just wanted to introduce you, um, myself to you and, and maybe take uh, conversations, not only here, but uh, outside this platform elsewhere. Um, my main focus has been very recently, um, as Roger said, I've been trying to establish an organization called uh, National Commission on Muslim Women. And this is this follows many other initiatives that I've been able to uh, have the uh, privilege of an honor of being able to be part of. What I wanted to say is that Change the Script is the campaign of this organization. And we want to celebrate women's presence and women's legacy in this country, particularly minority women. But that's not my main focus. My main focus is women per se and women's well-being. And I'm very pleased to say that uh, domestic violence, which has been uh, a problem of our uh, millennia um, is something that our government is finally addressing. And uh, today and uh, on Wednesday is almost the last hurdle of getting the um, legislation through and um, actually we'll be working on it until 12 o'clock tonight. And that is not an unusual experience, although it is lately in parliament. Those of you who work closely with parliament and our parliamentarians will know that, you know, our work never stops as women uh, in our homes, outside, within our communities, with our family, but then we have responsibilities wherever we are. And, you know, um, my final point will be that it is remarkable this new innovation of uh, online working and being able to reach out, it's, it's really opened up a new world of network of support. Although I so miss this physical um, hugging and touching, which is how me, Katie, and we all are perhaps, and I miss that so much because um, parliament is where I have driven you know, women's organization and women and, and children who never would dream of coming to parliament. I, I, my effort has been for the last 23 years to connect communities to parliament. And I, I miss this work and I hope and pray that, you know, we will overcome all of this together. And I think that's the message really for all of us. And I know that this, is, this would be shared by each and every one of you. It's only our collective action that will, you know, um, result any changes. And we've seen when we are uh, disunited, when we are disempowered from each other, then people can drive a wedge and uh, mayhem can occur. And all the progress we have made suddenly goes out of the window. Uh, George Floyd's death highlights that. But, you know, uh, one woman dies every week from partner violence. And so, you know, this is endless. So we need to continue. All of the women that are participating and all of our supporters, brothers uh, in arms that are here and present, I want to thank every one of you for taking part because without 
all of you, no changes will occur. So um, just my very final point is I'm on social media um, at uh, um, Baroness Suddin, uh, Twitter, which I'm not very great on, but Facebook and LinkedIn. And I look forward to seeing you and hearing you and being with you. Thank you so much for allowing me this morning to say a few words. And thank you, Laura. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Roger, for the outstanding work that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you so much for taking the, the time to speak with us this morning.